Hello and welcome to my channel. For those of you who see me for the first time, I'm Daniela and today's video will be a little bit different. I have no tutorial for today, but I will answer your questions which you send me here in the comments on YouTube, Instagram, email and so on. Uh, I thought that uh, I would make such a video from time to time because I get more and more of those questions and sometimes some of them are repeated a lot. So I will focus on such a question first and foremost. I'm very happy for your questions. You also give me feedback uh, on what to focus on more and, and so on. So please do not hesitate to write me and ask absolutely anything you want. I will answer you directly and at the same time I will shoot such a video about the most frequently asked questions once in a while. Okay, so before we get started I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you don't miss any new videos. And leave a comment down below it really helps my channel to grow so I can shoot more tutorials for you. If you want to support me even more, also check my Patreon. You can find the link in the description of the video. Um, I have the most questions from you about bead crochet, so I will start with that. You ask me a lot what to do when you don't have a complete pattern for the whole necklace or bracelet or something you would like to do. As an example, I will show you here the sample pattern that I created. Uh, it doesn't matter at all that you only see 20 lines from the whole project here. What you see here are two repetitions of the pattern, the first and the second. I deliberately chose this pattern because in order to crochet the whole length of my project correctly, I need two repetitions of the pattern. In most cases, you only need one repetition of the pattern, but I will get to that in a moment. This is because uh, in this pattern, the first and last rows are made of beads of the same color. So uh, when a list of the beads is automatically created, the program assumes that this last row is a repetition of the first. So as a result, you would have only one row of these dark blue beads. Here you can see that the list of the beads looks differently with only one repetition of the pattern. Uh, in the pattern with two repetitions you can see that there are 16 more dark blue beads in the beginning of the list of the beads and in the pattern with one repetition they are not. But if we have some um, such pattern where, where the first and last rows have no common part, we only need one repetition of the pattern. As you can see, the list of the beads does not change uh, when I add another repetition of the pattern. Uh, but if the black stripe was not here, the program would think that the two parts were the same and would omit them in the list of the beads. So even though I made a simple copy and the patterns look the same at first glance, they won't be the same as a result. Here, uh, for this one repetition of the pattern, the pattern will be repeated after 144 beats because the program thinks that this part is, is the same and I just started drawing the pattern again. And for this pattern with two repetitions, the pattern is repeated after 150 beats. It's good to watch out for this. And if you don't want to think about it, it's a good idea to always create two repetitions to keep it clear. If you find some free patterns on Pinterest, for example, it's better to look at a pattern well before threading the beads, if it's correct, so that you are not disappointed when, when crocheted that it actually looks different. And of course, that you put so much unnecessary work into it. I assume that this will not happen with paid patterns, for example, on Etsy. Um, the seller could not afford such a mistake. So I hope it's clear now. If you still have any questions, do not hesitate to write me in the comments and let's move on. When it comes to crochet patterns, you often ask me about the difference between three columns, draft, corrected and simulation. I've already mentioned it in at least two tutorials, but it probably wasn't enough because questions about this come to me from time to time. So I will explain it here again. The first graph uh, called draft gives you the shrinking order. Uh, the shrinking order starts at the top right and goes to the bottom right to left. This graph just represents the shrinking order and doesn't show you much of how the, how the end result will look. Some people prefer to string the beads according to this graph, but I prefer to string the beads according to the list of the beads. The second graph is called corrected 
and it shows how the pattern will look crocheted. It's just a still flat representation of the pattern, just like the first graph. You can also string the beads according to this graph, but it's a little bit more complicated, so there is no, no need to do that. And the third graph called simulation shows you how the finished bead crochet row will look. Uh, you can see only one side of the row, but you can move it with these arrows up here. Okay, so I also got some questions about whether it's possible to transfer the bead crochet pattern to peyote, respectively a peyote with a twist. It's possible but it's quite time consuming, so it's definitely not for everyone. I won't go into too much detail because the explanation would be quite complicated. I haven't tried it personally yet, but I have found an amazing tutorial by Gail B. Tana that is free to download. Uh, the instructions are very detailed, I will give you a link to the uh, description of the video. You also often ask me what kind of crochet thread I use. I mostly used Czech products called Cordonet or Perlovka. It's possible to buy them in European Union. For example, Czech e-shop stoklasa-eu.com delivers to European Union. But it's very difficult to buy these threads outside to European Union. But fortunately, you can buy very similar threads uh, that have the same parameters. I was looking for a lot of information about the sizes of crochet threads. If, for example, the size designations differ in Europe and in the USA, and I didn't find any differences. If you do, please tell me in the comments. With thread, the higher the number of the thread, the thinner it is. As the number of the thread goes up, the thickness goes down. Wikipedia says that crochet thread comes in sizes from 3 to 100, although historically it came in much finer sizes down to 200. I mostly work with sizes 30, 50 and 80. I use size 30 when I work with size 8 beads, size 50 when I work with size 11 beads and size 80 when I work with very, very small beads like 15s. But be careful! Yarn sizes are different. With yarn, the higher the number, the thicker the yarn. It's a little confusing, but it's, it's true. So watch out for that. One of the most common questions is also how many beads you have to order if you want to crochet a necklace. I made a whole video on how to calculate how many beads you will need to make any product. I will put a link up here. If you watch this video, you will find out how to calculate the number of beads you will need. Most e-shops sell the beads in the bags of, of, of a certain number of grams. It is uh, most often 5, uh, 7.5, 10, 20 and 50 grams. Um, for example, you can see that there are approximately 1000 beads and in, in 10 grams. Uh, the weight of individual beads does not only differ according to size, but also each brand has a different weight of beads of the same size and it also depends on the surface finish. For example, uh, plated beads are a bit heavier. There's also often a question about the invisible join in bead crochet. Uh, you tell me that you tried it according to my tutorial, but that you don't have a nice connection, that the crochet rope is thinner in the place where the connection is. It also happened to me when I learned uh, how to connect them. This happens because usually one bead fits in or you connect beads from the wrong row to the other and then it looks thinner. This usually happens only in two last steps and I point out uh, this in the tutorial. When you finish the connection, the crochet rope seems to be completely connected, but in reality it's missing to connect two more beads together. A good tip is to count the number of connections. It should be the same as the number of, of the beads in one row. Uh, and also it's good to train it with some cylinder beads like the whole treasure or delicas so you can see the mistake easily. Almost every day you ask me where I buy my beads. Uh, well, I live in the Czech Republic, so I buy it here in local shops and e-shops. Uh, the Czech Republic is famous for its beads. The story of Czech glass begins in the 3rd century before Christ. But today's video is not about the history, so maybe we will talk about it someday. I buy my beads mostly at koralky.cz or koralek-obchod.cz. Uh, 
uh, both also deliver goods within the European Union. But in the description of my tutorials, you can always find the list of products I used in the tutorial with links uh, where you can buy them. And I intentionally give links to eShop that supply their products mostly worldwide. I often use links to Amazon, Fire Mountain Gems and many others. And if they are not currently delivering to your country, um, then at least you know exactly what to look for, B-type, exact color number or color name and so on. All this you can always find in the description of the video. The only exceptions are if I take some beads from my old stocks uh, for which I have no labels and I can't find out what color it is. It may no longer be produced but I always try to find a product. I also got a few questions about how I like to work with the cordless glue gun that you saw in some of my videos. I'm using this cordless Bosch glue pen. I haven't tried another brand of cordless glue pens or glue guns, so I cannot compare with others. I still have a normal Dremel glue gun with a cord uh, and it's also very good. Neither of them drips. But when I do some bigger projects, uh, I use the one with cord. Bosch does not have such a long battery life and cannot be used when charging. For me, two parameters are important for glue guns. So that it does not drape and that it heats up quickly. Both of these brands meet this, so I'm very happy with them. I once borrowed a no-name cheap glue gun and it drips terribly and I didn't work well with it, so I will definitely stay with these verified brands. I also got some questions about the needles I sew with. Uh, it's definitely necessary to buy a special needle for beads. You can sew much with a normal needle because it's too thick. I most often use June James needles of size 12. You can sew even very small beads with this needle size. So if you don't know what to buy in the beginning, you will definitely not make a mistake with this brand. So these are probably the most frequently asked questions you've sent me in the last six months. I'm very happy that you sent me those questions uh, because I know what to focus on more and you give me the perfect feedback. So if you have any questions, feel free to write me down below in the comments. I will try to answer everything, but sometimes it happens that I miss something because I get a lot of those comments, like on Instagram, also here on YouTube, sometimes something in the mail, especially I miss something if you comment on an existing comment here on YouTube, because I will not receive an email notification so I can miss it. Um, so if I don't respond for a few days, try writing to me again. Also, I would like to ask you to please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you don't miss any new videos. Happy beating and see you next time. Bye!